Today I'm going to show you how to make a sheet metal overstrike collar for your axe or maul. So before we transfer these lines, I want to make sure that this is contoured and fitting pretty good. I'm going to use a brass hammer. I need a little bit more uh, power than the plastic will give me. Uh, and the brass is softer than the steel, so it will be a little bit better. And we can do more fitting on that once we get this contours. This one, make sure that we're not going to be moving too much. Okay. So, so this beautiful axe head being hand forged is not the same on both sides. So we'll mark each side. So not being a sheet metal guy, I don't know if this is the best tool. I don't think I've ever cut a radius this tight. I think what I'll do is I'll just be conservative. I'll try it here and see what happens. Stay outside the lines as much as possible. And maybe we'll have to file that down to the line. It seems to be following the contour pretty good. Now for this other side, I'll be cutting to the left, so I'll switch over to the left-handed snip nippers. Let's try it on here. So here's the other side, and I noticed that the brass hammer, mark, you know, put some dents in there. Uh, so that wasn't, that's not, not recommended. Okay, so now we have to do our finish fitting right there. So let's run the compass on here one more time. We'll go to the, we'll go to the widest gap right here, and then we'll fit this into kind of where we want it to be. So now we're going to very carefully do our second trim there. I better get my reading glasses on. My sister calls them my old man glasses. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Okay. I really don't mind getting old. There's a peace and contentment that comes with it that I've never experienced before. All right, let's go for the, the final fit here. How far do we go with it? How far do you go? <laughs> That's pretty good though, isn't it? Let's check the other side. I'm pretty happy with the fit so far, so I'll finish off these rough jagged edges with a half round file. So here's what it looks like so far. Still don't know how I'm going to fit it, fit it, <laughs> fix it. I'm kind of a seat of the pants type of designer. There's the point there. Got all the hard edges off there. Let's uh, let's fit it here and then see what we're going to do with the back side. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? There we go. So I'd, I'd like to do one of these again next time before the head is hung. Let's bend that around there and just kind of see. So I'm going to have to use a ball, ball peen hammer on here. It's just too small. So 
So I'm going to hold tension on this and starting here I'm going to work down around. This is going to get a little bit dented up. There's just no way around it because I want it to fit pretty tight to follow the contours of the wood. So as I work it down I'll be pulling that extra material out to the back and bring that gap closer together. So what are our options for securing this? Again, this is not ideal to, I can see that, to put this on after the head is hung, but I think it'll work. So, the only two options I can see are either screws that would countersink and sit flush. We, we can't have a bolt or anything sticking out here because this is when a wood, you get a gnarled, twisty piece of wood, oftentimes they'll rotate up and, and then you know your handle goes through there and it's going to really hang up and it's going to be a problem. So it's got to be really clean. It doesn't have to be flush, but it's got something that's not going to hang on it. I don't think the screw is the best way to do it. I think um, a rivet. So I found this in my junk bin here. It's got a flat edge on it, which is perfect. It's not too big, so it's a small hole. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I don't think it's a big enough hole to weaken the head significantly. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll drill that through here, and we'll set this rivet. We'll cut it off, and then we'll pound it. We'll pound it flat and see if that doesn't do it. So we'll put that rivet back as far as I can. I don't want it to get going at too much of an angle. I think that's about ideal. Interesting fact, you see that right there, that's the Husqvarna, their logo. That's their old logo, hundreds of years ago, and it, they used to make gun parts, and it's a, a sight, sight picture for a musket. You can see the wings and the center post there. Little axe trivia. All right, so we'll use a center punch. Whenever we drill something like this, we want to center punch it. That keeps the drill bit from wandering. That's all it takes right there. So I've got the collar stretched over a piece of old shovel handle just for the back, some backing, so I don't mind drilling through it. So we've got both of our holes drilled there. We want that rivet to fit very tight. So I'm going to put my jack clamp on there, make sure that it doesn't shift and I'm ready to drill. Uh, the tools that I use to, to do this project, I'll put in the subject heading as well. So you can, if you don't have them, you can order them, or at least know what they are. So the die is cast and the holes are drilled. It's done deal now. Another essential tool for a homestead shop is a ball door grinder. Grinder on one side, wire brush on the other. I think that's better. So I'm going to cold forge this rivet here, just putting it on a hard surface. I'll smart, start with a small hammer and see if we can't pin that down. Going to need a bigger hammer, I can tell that already. All right, bigger hammer. So that pin was the right length. There was the there was the factory side, and you can see the my side there. So uh, that's on there. We just have to work out the little bumps. So there it is. It's not perfect. But it was a, kind of an experiment. Next one will be better. But it, it's solid. It doesn't shake around. I think it looks really great. It looks like it slipped on me right there a little bit. I'll do better next time. There's the back wraps around. I think that's, that's really nice. That's really good. Anything that's, that, that is going to be splitting wood, uh, if you want to really protect the handle, I, I think that that's great. Maybe it would have been a little nicer to put a little, maybe a little bit more of an art radius in there. That would look kind of nice. But I want to use it, take it out, and see if it's, if it holds up, if it's just feasible. I think it is. I, I, I like that. It's just insurance. You know, I hate to, to go to the trouble of making a handle. There's so much work in them. And then, um, 
one strike and, and ruin it. I've done that so many times, and but that is, uh, that's nice. That's really nice. I think that that's wonderful. I am so excited to take this axe out and try it out. I haven't really split wood with it yet, so I'm going to do a full review of the axe and we'll split a good cord of wood with it and find out if, uh, if it's as good as I think it's going to be. So I've got some videos for you. Blast from the past. Top left is answer the question why I won't do TV or why I won't be on TV. Uh, top right is how Mrs. Wrangler Star and I got out of debt. A plan that worked for us. We were heavily in debt and we uh, put our nose down and followed a very strict plan and were able to dig ourselves out of that. Bottom left is one of my original videos. It's actually a video that I recovered from the Wrangler Barn days and it was uh, building my double barrel stove. And bottom right uh, is uh, the proper way to stack firewood. So I hope you enjoy those videos. Uh, you can click on them and they'll go directly to uh, the player. Uh, those of you who are watching on mobile, which is 50% of you, uh, can uh, go to the subject heading and find the links there, as well as links uh, to the tools used in the making of this collar. So if you don't mind taking a moment, click the thumbs up. We appreciate it. We thank you for that. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.